I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about touch libraries, grid forms, circle type, and more. Let's check it out. First up, Nick, we have a library called touche.js or or touchy.js touch touchy touche it, one of those it's spelled touch with an e but there's no accent on the e so we're not sure so we're not sure essentially uh, anyway this is a pretty cool library um, that is desi it's designed for touchscreen devices like phones and tablets and what it does is removes the delay that happens when you touch an element on the page now there is a 300 millisecond delay that happens on touch devices you know it waits for a click that doesn't work so then it registers the touch but you can access that in JavaScript and kind of remap it so this is a really really great library um, now what it does removes a 300 millisecond delay and then it also takes your click events applied with jQuery and then remaps them to the touch end event for devices that support touch and finally if you're not using jQuery then it gives you a method called on for you to use as you can see it's very very easy to use you just give it the path to touch e.js and then all you need to do is call the touch or touche function and then say hey what happens on the click well go ahead and handle the click pass it a function whatever if you are curious about how it works you can check it out on github uh, i really like this library it's pretty simple you know we've co we've covered other libraries that do similar things before but this one does just the bare minimum so definitely check that out touche i don't think that was the correct use of touche at all I know, that's ironic. But it felt like an appropriate <laughs> spot to use it in. Uh, next up is a small JavaScript library called Motio. I know that because it says small JavaScript library on the page. It's for sprite-based animations and panning. So you can see here we have this cloud background. And it's very it's, relaxing. It's panning by slowly. Man, I'm drifting off to sleep here. Uh, it's only 3 kilobytes in production, 1.5 kilobytes gzip, so it's very, very small. It has no dependencies. It works everywhere, although there is a jQuery plugin if you would like to use that. Now, what the heck does this do? Well, you can make some clouds pan by. Okay. So if I hover my mouse over here, you can go ahead and see what that might look like. I feel like I am falling. Uh, that's wonderful. And you can also animate sprites. So that's another example. Uh, you can create these 360 interactive views. So essentially that's just swapping uh, one sprite for another. So we're just seeing a bunch of different pictures here and swapping them in and out. And then you can have extreme spriting as shown in the example here. That's pretty extreme. Or you can actually create uh, an entire video game here. Oops, excuse me. You can go ahead and and kick there. That's pretty awesome. But anyway, uh, that's Motio. Uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that's nice. Like, uh, like it. Pretty relaxing, except for that part where I felt like I was falling through the clouds. Hmm. Next up, we have a project called Grid Forms. Their tagline is "Data Entry Can Be Beautiful." This is a library that, as you might guess, arranges your forms in a grid. Into a grid. Oh. Yeah into okay. a grid uh, but it actually is pretty good looking if you if you take a look at the site right here um, you can give it basically the full width of whatever container it's in and it gives it a nice um, highlighted area so you can see the rest of this page is like a an off-white color look That's, at that it's wonderful i feel like i'm doing my taxes yeah doesn't it if you want that that government look on your websites you know, if you don't if you don't have enough bureaucracy feeling in your web applications, then go ahead and use grid forms. <laughs> um, but it's uh, you know it's pretty easy to use. Here's here's an example bank application. You know, this would be great obviously if you were a bank. Um, <laughs> we're really selling it here. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, it's uh, it's nice. You know, pretty pretty easy to use. A uh, little bit of JavaScript and CSS. You can download it on GitHub and take a look at it if you're interested. Um, you can find the link to this in our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or on iTunes search for us at the treehouse show next up is this really cool post over at code drops I love this blog so much it's called animated checkboxes and radio buttons with SVG now when I first saw this 
I thought, well, what could be so special about radio buttons or SVGs? I mean, they're pretty cool on their own, but when I went ahead and clicked, whoa, look what? at that. It actually X's those off. Is that you doing that in real time? And animates the SVGs. Nope. This is, uh, this is real life internet. Wow. You can also get a couple of different effects uh, by using animated SVGs here. So here you have this kind of filling in the bubble effect. Uh, you can have a more organic check for check boxes. You can also have uh, circles around radio buttons. Uh, you can also fill in stuff for check boxes as well, similar to uh, what we saw previously. All sorts of different types of effects can be applied here. So, how the heck are they doing this? Well, they're using SVG uh, path transitions. So, they link to this cool article about drawing animated lines in SVGs, and this takes the idea a step further by applying them to form elements. So, they essentially hide the real form element, and then they display you a separate pseudo element that actually is what gets animated. So, uh, Pretty cool stuff. You can download the source code there, or you can just play with the demo. I can play with that all day. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but here's all the uh, CSS and HTML with a tutorial on how to do it. So a pretty cool post. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a project called Lodash. Uh, Lodash is a JavaScript library that's kind of like an underscore replacement. If you've never used underscore, it gives you just a lot of utility methods when working with arrays, collections, different things like that. So, they recently released version 2.2.1, and uh, it's, it's pretty great. So, let's take a look. Uh, here are some of the features that are not in underscore. Um, things like dealing with currying, for each being chainable, um, pull and remove for doing different things to arrays. But let's take a look at the documentation. You can see on the left here, tons of different options when working with arrays. You can get the first item, find the index, get a range. Uh, you can chain different things, things dealing with collections, which may or may not be arrays. Uh, you know, a lot of these things are convenience methods that you might be used to in other programming languages, such as, you know, Ruby, Python, things that you might be missing in JavaScript, this library implements. And it does it really well. So, recommend checking it out. Again, we'll have a link to it in the show notes. Not too much to say, really easy to use. Yeah, no, you really uh, underscored uh, why you might want to use it. Okay, uh, next up is circletype.js. Uh, if we take a look at this beautiful looking red and white uh, text here, uh, this lovely font, you can go ahead and highlight it, and you see that it's actually real text on the page. This is not an image. Wow. Uh, circletype.js is just a very small jQuery plugin, and the way you use it is by selecting an element, as you would in jQuery, and then you use circle type, and you just say the radius uh, that you want to use. You can also change the direction here, so you can set direction to negative one if you want a reversed arc here. It's like a smile. Or you can just have an auto radius, so if you don't uh, give circle type a radius, it will just put it in a complete circle, and there's a whole bunch of other cool little bits that you can play with. This works in Internet Explorer 9 and up, so that's probably the only browser where you might experience a couple hiccups with this, but uh, pretty much every other browser it works in is um, in heavy usage, so you should be fine there. Um, but pretty cool, so if you want to go ahead and make a little bit of word art on yeah. your web page. You say it reminds me of MS Publisher. You can go ahead and do that now. Circa 2002. Hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Next up, we have a project called Odometer. Uh, as you might expect, it gives you uh, odometer like functionality on your web pages. Uh, so check it out. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll reload the page here so you can see these letters coming in. And wow, look at that. Whoa. Look at that. Well, are we in a movie or on a web page? Boom. Uh, anyway, this, uh, it has a, a lot of different options on here. This would be great on you know, a, a movie site, maybe you know, a car site. Huh? Or if you're counting down to something. Yeah, like yeah. the seconds until this show ends. Or if you want to have the number of viewers for this show, which is uh, zero, the, right? It's in the tens, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the solid tens. All right. 
<laughs> anyway, a um, bunch of different options, pretty cool, pretty easy to use, and, uh, and that's it. You know, just give it the HTML you want, and, and boom, you're in there. Not too much to say, pretty cool. Um, I like it. Just, just a nice little tool to have in the arsenal there. Nice. All right, I like it a lot. Well, speaking of tools in the arsenal, next up is a huge list of front-end dev bookmarks. This is a list on GitHub and pull requests are welcome so you can go ahead and contribute to this list and it's pretty extensive here so no matter what you're into or what you want to know about front-end dev it's probably got something for you here's typography there's a whole bunch of stuff there all not seeing any treehouse links in here no, huh? That's really weird. I'm gonna submit a pull request. Uh, there's animation libraries, uh, one of which I've put together, but I don't actually see it listed there either. <clears throat> That's probably uh, a good idea not to list it. Um, there's there's widgets here, all sorts of things. This is very extensive. Again, look at all that scrolling. That's how that's how big this web page is. Not a whole lot to say about it, but uh, wow, it's a really, really comprehensive list. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have another list from GitHub by the user MHM5000. It's a list of lists. Yeah. He's, nested list. Yeah, he's done a, a wonderful thing and compiled a list of all of the links that you see here on the Treehouse Show. Which now, the link to this list of Treehouse Show links will appear on the list of Treehouse Show links. Wow. So if you click it, you'll be in the same spot. Right. Wow. Wow, I just got incepted. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is a great list. Uh, how could it not be great? We came up with it. Uh, I mean, the, the, the original links. Right. Um, anyway, thanks so much for putting that together. And uh, yeah, we'll have a link to that, as Nick said, in the show notes. That's right. So I think that's about all we got for this week. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. I recommend following me on Twitter, maybe not so much Nick. For more information on anything we talked about uh, on this show, check out the links at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes at the Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, business, mobile, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Thank you.